In my opening remarks, I threatened to come back and tell you about the uh, relationship between this piece we're about to hear and Goethe's Faust, and I think I'm going to make good on that threat. Uh, I mentioned that he wrote it when he was 16 years old, and he was an extraordinary prodigy, maybe the greatest prodigy ever. Although in the Mendelssohn family, there was more than one prodigy. His older sister, Fanny, was also an extraordinary child prodigy, both as a pianist and as a composer. And of course, their parents, Abraham and Leah, they're very well-to-do, and, and they would have these regular musicales to feature their extraordinary children. And this piece we're about to hear was premiered in one of those musicales in their Berlin home in 1825, on October the 17th. And she was there, of course, and she, like everybody else, knew immediately that uh, this piece was the first real masterpiece he'd written, and was a piece that was going to elevate him to the pantheon of the truly great composers. And the two of them were very close throughout their rather short lives. And they talked about all kinds of things. And this piece held a very special place in both of their hearts. And some years later, she wrote about this piece in her journal. And she described a conversation that she had with, with Felix about the inspiration behind the third movement, this gossamer fairyland uh, scherzo. And apparently, he explained to her that it was based in a, in a spiritual and atmospheric sense, on a scene from Faust where Faust and Mephistopheles go to a witch's Sabbath. And then afterwards, they retire to a play. And the play has nothing to do with the drama at large. It's just, I think, Goethe's way of saluting Shakespeare because it's, it's called the golden wedding of Oberon and Tatiana, the king and the queen of the fairies. And this is about their reconciliation. And as the wedding unfolds, there's a diminutive music master who, who comes up and he makes a little orchestra out of woodland creatures and insects and bugs. And he says to them, snout of fly, mosquito nose, damnable amateurs, frog of leaves, cricket of grass, you are now musicians, sir. And Felix, recreates the sound of this whirring, chirping, buzzing orchestra of insects. And at the end of the scene, Fanny quotes the final words of, of Goethe, which run, the flight of the cloud and the veil of the mist are lit from above. A breeze in the leaves, a wind in the reeds, and all has vanished. And at the end of this movement, the third movement, he recreates this sound of this fairyland wedding vanishing up into the illuminated mist. And so with the spirit of, of the wedding of, of these two fairy king and queen hovering so palpably over this movement, it really is no stretch to imagine the ways that it is reflected in the other movements as well. For instance, the first movement begins with this shivering burst of tremolo in the lower portion of the octet, and out of that rises this impetuous violin solo, which has a kind of a Faustian impetuosity, because I think it may be meant to represent the 50-year-old Faust's feeling of the life force pulsing in his veins again, having been rejuvenated by Mephistopheles himself. And you can imagine that Felix, at the age of 16, really must have felt not just the life force 
pulsing through his veins, but he must have felt like Superman because not only did he have all the energy of youth, but like Faust, he had this sense of premature mastery, of the mastery of a 50-year-old. And the second movement has a completely different atmosphere than the first. And looking into the story, it probably was meant to represent this moment a little bit later on where Faust's lover Gretchen has been seduced by him and then impregnated and now abandoned. And she wanders into this dismal antique church searching for solace and for forgiveness. And so he creates this atmosphere by this droning, open, hollow, spiritually empty pair of violas. And then a couple of cellos come in playing this lamenting C minor Siciliano. And then in the next bar, you have this almost visual sense of the curtain rising on this scene in the cathedral. And not only does the curtain rise, but you have the, the rising of the key from C minor up into D flat major, which is a much more hopeful key. And the whole sonority goes up from this gnarled, dark knot of violas and cellos, and it goes up into this angelic quartet of violins. which I think forms this perfect sound image of Gretchen walking pleadingly, this innocent penitent going into the church in search of redemption, in search of forgiveness. But of course, she doesn't achieve that because God isn't waiting for her there. The devil is, Mephistopheles. And he greets her with his minions and they taunt her and they torment her in this dark, deathly key of E flat minor. And the final movement begins literally like a bat out of hell. It is this astonishing virtuoso showpiece for all eight members of the ensemble, but also for the 16-year-old composer himself, because he's showing his Bachian mastery of counterpoint and his Beethovenian mastery of architecture. And it begins with this, this mad scramble, this fugue in eight parts, which rises sequentially from a scrubbing second cello all the way up to a squealing first violin. And if you're looking for the Faustian tie-in here, many musicologists think that what this represents is this battle in the climax of the story for the soul of Gretchen. She has been tried. She has been found guilty of her sins. She has been sentenced to die. And so she is waiting for her execution in her prison cell and in storm Mephistopheles and Faust. And they say, come on, we're going to spring you. Get on the horse. Let's ride out of here. And she says, no, thank you. I deserve to die. I'm going to my execution. And she goes willingly. And as soon as she has been executed, of loving and forgiving God welcomes her into heaven. And we know that because we hear all of these quotes from the Messiah, and, and he will reign forever. And you can almost visually see this tussle between God and the devil over the soul of, of Gretchen. There was a great musicologist in the 20th century whose name was uh, Sir Donald Francis Tovey, and he wrote this very English description of the last movement. He said, the finale is very boyish, but so amusing that it wears a good deal better than many a more responsible utterance. <laughs> So let's enjoy this irresponsible utterance and this irrepressible peace together. <laughs> 